Welcome to the channel, my name is James, and today we're looking at Shelly for Hass. Now when I made a video on the Shelly 3EM, I had a comment that suggested that I try the Discovery script, and I'm assuming they meant Shelly for Hass. At the time, I thought that there was no point because I already had my configuration down and my MQTT sorted out, but I thought I'd give it a go anyway. And I discovered it was really good. It was awesome. It didn't make for a very long video, so I've included two installations, one installation of a Shelly dimmer and a Shelly 2.5, and then we're gonna set them up using Shelly for Hass. So let's go do that and check it out now. Okay, so this is the switch plate we're gonna be changing out. We're gonna be installing a Shelly 2.5 and a push button to operate our back lights. The feed for our, from our sensor also comes into here, so we're gonna be able to use that in Home Assistant by detecting it with this Shelly 2.5. So we know the power's off, so we're gonna remove this switch plate and we'll install both these items. This switch plate is made by Voltex, and although it's a cheaper brand, I'm actually pretty happy with it. I think it's quite, quite good, the Voltex switches. So just here we can have a look at our two-state switch. Basically, we've got it drawn just here. So the common, or the light, heads off to our lights and it turns our lights on. We have the input here from the sensor, so here. So when the switch is turned off, the sensor will activate the lights. However, when you turn the switch on, the lights will be connected through to active, so they'll be permanently turned on. So that's how it's wired at the moment. So we're gonna change that a little bit. So first of all, we're picking up our active feed and taking it to the common and our new switch. And that also feeds the Shelly an active feed. We're gonna connect up our neutral for our Shelly and we're gonna use our looping terminal to put the neutral into. Our first switch into the Shelly is gonna be coming from our push button. So when we operate the push button, it will operate the Shelly on channel one. Our second switch is gonna come from our motion sensor. So when the motion sensor picks up motion, it will operate switch two on our Shelly. And last of all, we're gonna take our light so that our Shelly will turn our light on. And we're gonna connect that to channel relay one. So now it's all connected. So that pushing the push button will turn on channel one. And channel two will see, detect if there's any motion from the motion sensor. So we're just gonna tuck it back into the wall box and screw it all back. And we're gonna set it up with the app. So we're just gonna connect this to Wi-Fi, And then we're gonna try out the new integration, the Shelly, um, Shelly for Hass integration. You can see how with these pucks, they do take up a bit of space in the switch box. So even just having one switch, it makes it difficult to fit everything back in. So you definitely couldn't have many more than two switches on a plate, otherwise it's just too hard to fit everything back into the wall. Okay, so now it's installed and powered up. All we have to do is join it to our wireless network. So we're gonna use the app to do that. Now, I found that the Shelly app on the Android isn't that great, so I haven't had much success with it, but on the iPad it's working okay. So with iOS it seems to be fine. To include it, we just come up to the options here and do add device. We enter in our wireless network, we want it to join, and press next. And then we select Shelly 2.5. And it should start looking for the access point that Shelly creates. We'll try it again. So that's our new Shelly C4B. 
So we'll do join. And that's pretty much it. That's all you need to do. From here, once it's joined the wireless network, we can actually use Shelly for Hass and it will find it and integrate it into Home Assistant. There's almost nothing to do. Like it's really easy. It's amazing. <laughs> it saves so much time. But we can also add it into our app if we want to. If we want to add it, we can just go to Discover Devices and we can see our Shelly there, the C4B. If we click on it, we can test it. And we can see it's turned the lights on. So that's the one. So we can click add and we'll just add it to outside, call it backlights. And we'll save that device. We won't connect it to the cloud. There's no need to do that because we're gonna be connected to the internet via Home Assistant. So now we have our Shelly just here and it's working our lights like so. Okay, let's head over and we're gonna set up a Shelly dimmer and then we'll go set both of them up with Hass for Shelly on Home Assistant. Okay, this is the next switch we're gonna be changing. This is the kitchen bench. And we're gonna be adding a dimmer to it. So we're gonna add the Shelly dimmer and we're gonna be trying something a little bit different this time. We're gonna be using a two gang switch and we're gonna be with push buttons and we're gonna be making use of the second input. So there's actually two switch inputs on this Shelly dimmer. So one will control the dimmer and one can control something else. So let's turn the power off and we'll get started on this one. So this switch is exactly the same as the other one we just looked at. It's a two state switch, except it's only got the um, active and the light switch. So the active coming in and the switch going out to the light. So we've got our active just here. And we're gonna loop it to each of the common on each switch. And this is our active feed coming in. Now these switches these clip, clipsal ones, they're the only ones that I've found so far that actually feel any good to press. Many, lots of the other types are, just feel rubbish when you're trying to use them, they feel like they're not working properly. These ones have a positive pushing action. So we'll put our first switch onto the top one. And our second switch will go onto the bottom, the bottom switch. And last of all, this is our feed out to our lights that goes into the Shelly dimmer. These plastic wall boxes that are mounted in the brickwork, I've purposely put them back deeper than normal. So there's about 25 mil from the plaster to the switch box to make it easier to fit pucks back into the wall. But you can actually also get um, plastic wall boxes that are deeper than the standard and it gives you more room to fit things like this in behind the switch box. So you can see how it can get tricky when you've got two switches and it's almost impossible once you have three to fit everything back into the switch box. But we've got that back in there now and we can put the cover on and turn the power on it and we can set that one up, connect it to our network. And then we can try out Hass for Shelly and we'll see how easy it is. You pretty much don't have to do anything on that side of things. Okay, so we've installed our Shelly 2.5 and our Shelly dimmer. We're now in a clean install of Home Assistant. We've just got nothing on here but Home Assistant Community Store. I've actually already done this on my computer and it happened so fast and so easily that I thought I'd do it again on a, on a new install just to show you how good it is. So we just come into the Home Assistant Community Store, we come to Integrations, we search for Shelly for Hass and we install that. So that's installed. All we need to do is head over to Configuration just down here and we come into Integrations 
And if we come down to integrations and we do add integration and search for Shelly and click Shelly Smart Home. We get to choose the prefix for all our devices, which we will make Shelly because we don't have any prefixes yet. And click finish. So now that's going to start, the integration is going to start pulling in all the Shellys from our network. So we've got, tw I've got 12 on my network, including the two that we've just installed today. So that's just pulled them all in already, just like that. So that's way faster than setting them up manually by MQTT, definitely. So we'll just look through and we'll find the one we installed today. So here's the dimmer that we installed. I think it's this one. Uh, yeah, that's the dimmer that we installed. So we can see here we've got some control over the over the dimmer. We can control the level, turn it on and off. To get um, some more options though, we can come up to here and we can select some more things. So this is to add new entities. But here's the options just here. So we can enter our home assistant address, the IP address. Of the home assistant on our network, and we have we can enter our cl um, Shelly cloud key information in here if we want to use the Shelly cloud for some reason. We can choose all the attributes we want to pull in from our devices, and it says to be careful that we don't overload the database. I've got a, my system running on a virtual machine, so I've got no problem with hard drive space or space. So I'll just select everything. Obviously, you probably don't need to have everything. So you just would select what you wanted. You can see there's plenty of choices, heaps of things to choose from that it's going to bring in that we'll be able to use, especially switch state just here that we can use. So click Submit and Finish. And that will start to bring in some more devices information. But before it will bring in all of it, we need to just do a restart of Home Assistant. So now it's restarted, we can come back into integrations again. And you'll see, if we go back to the demo that we installed, a whole heap of more information, tons of information that's all brought in as entities. There's binary, um, binary sensors, um, uptime sensors, the temperature, it's got everything in here. And we can see we've got the binary sensors, the two switches on the Shelly dimmer that we can make use of. So if we come and look at the state of the kitchen switch, you can see if we open it up that we have two switches, switch one and switch two. So if I press switch one, you see it turn true. In our switch two, we see that turns true as well. So we can use this one here now to do something else, like open the gate or turn off all the lights at night time. And we can simply rename it. So we can rename it to kitchen down lights. And we can rename that to kitchen so it's easy to remember and update it. So we can just come through here and we can rename everything. We can actually rename this part here as well, so we can just call it the. Um, so we can actually rename that part there. So when we look back out here, we can see the names that we want on here to make it easier for us. So that's like super cool. And we, one of the coolest things I think would be very useful is you can do an update. Okay, I can't remember exactly where it was. All my devices are. All their firmware is up to date. You can see the firmware version here is up to date and I know all of them are. When it's not up to date, there will be a switch on here that you can click and it will update the firmware for you, which is a really handy feature. So that way you don't have to go around your network and try and find the ones that need updating. So that's one really cool feature that I think I'd make use of quite a bit. And another thing that have, using this um, way of installing Shelly's, I would probably have um, a little spreadsheet and I could pre-program all my Shelly devices with the with the just with the network that they're connected to and have a, li a list of what they are for and where they're going 
and then once I've physically installed them, all I have to do is run this integration and it pulls all the entities in and sets everything up just like that. And all you have to do is come through and rename it. So I think this is an excellent time saver, especially if you're installing quite a few of these devices in a property or a building. So definitely worth trying out. Well, in conclusion, this integration made by Styrahem, Shelly Distributor in Sweden, is an excellent time saver and it really does help you to integrate your Shelly devices into Home Assistant. I would recommend if you do use their integration to give them some support to help them continue work on the, on the integration. And if you haven't given it a go yet, I recommend you at least try it out. It's gonna make it much easier to install Shelly devices in your home automation setup. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. And if you want to see more videos in home automation, please subscribe. And if you like the video, please, please give us a thumbs up. Bye.